So they want you to uh, determine the factorization. And uh, here we do want you to do the prime factorization. So you want to make sure your final answer number, all the numbers are prime numbers. And I will give you an example before. Uh, let's look. So let's see. Um, so if I want to factor 60 into a product of prime numbers, how 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 do I break down six? Now there are several different ways. A common way is to use a factory tree. Uh, you may have seen this before. So you take the number 60 as kind of like the root and you break down 60. Now when you break down 60, there are so many different ways. You could do so some students may say, oh, I can see it's six times 10. I mean, uh, some students may say, OK, I see um, 2 times 30. Or maybe you have, I don't know if anybody sees it as 5 times 12. So there are so many ways. So which way is the correct way? All of them are correct, OK? Because this is not the final answer yet. You have to continue. So when you keep doing this, eventually everybody will get the same answer, OK? So the thing is, but the thing is here, um, how do we know? we can break down. I think probably there's no question like why we can break down 60 as six, six times 10 because 60 means six tens, right? So that's kind of obvious. But the other two, like how did you know I can break break down 60 as two times 30? Um, how did you know six? I can break down 60 as five times something, five times 12. So we do have some rules that can help you to determine very quickly whether two goes into a number. I think most of you probably know um, two goes into what kind of number? What what kind of number is divisible by two? Does anybody know? Even numbers? Yes, very good. Thank you, Kirby. Um, so with even number, what kind of numbers are even numbers? Two, four, six, eight, ten. And uh, keep counting. And uh, what about 12? Yeah. Yeah. So yes, so a quick way to describe it is all these numbers, the numbers Kirby just mentioned, they all end in 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. All right, so here I'm going to give you the rules. OK, again, you don't have to copy this because I will post it online on Blackboard. So to save you some time of copying down all these words, so the rule for two, so how do we check whether two, three, five is a factor? I just went over the definition of factor, which is the second meaning. So number goes into whatever. So how do we know whether two goes into a given number? Now, it's, uh, you can just use what, if you know what even numbers are, um, you can just use what um, Kirby just said. If it's an even number, then two goes in there. Or you could just check the last digit. If it ends in 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, that, that's going to be um, divisible by 2 or 2 would go in there. Now for 5, we have a similar type of rule. We don't have a special name like call, we call these even numbers. Um, we, the numbers, so if you know, like for example, how did you know 5 goes into 60? Because it ends in 0. OK, so the, that second rule will tell you quickly. If the last digit is either 0 or 5, then 5 must go into that number. So that's how I know where well, the last digit is 0, so I know 5 sure can go into 60, which means I can break down 60 as uh, 5 times something. And then I just have to divide. OK, 5 goes into 60 how many times? I know 5 can go into 60 because it ends in 0, but how many times? You just divide it. OK, so that's the well, but uh, we want you. We want you to make sure the numbers you have are all prime numbers. So that's why we just talked to ask you what the prime numbers are, because you need to know that. So when I check the each of the solutions, when I look at my number six, not a prime because you can break down as two times three. And the same for 10, it's two times five. But now once you get here, look, every single number is prime now. Two, three, four, uh, two, three, five. So that's when you need to stop. And when you write your answer, you can 
uh, well, I would ask you to write it one more time to write 60 equals something times something times something times something because that's the format of factor like I showed you here. So whenever someone asks you to factor something as a verb, you always write it in so as something times something times something times something. So although the factor routine pretty much gave us the answer, but I would ask you to you know, just copy those numbers. Two times three times two times five. Uh, if you are a more organized person, you may want to switch these two just to put the numbers in a non-decreasing order. So from the smallest to the high, high largest, right? So if you want to do that, it's OK. Either way is fine. OK, and just make sure every number you write down is a prime number, OK? So now I'm going to do that. So what if you say I did it? I break. I first broke down 60 as two times 30, and you can continue. You will. So two is already prime. That means you you're done with two there. You cannot say break down further to get something you can't. So you will just leave it. But you can break down 30 as whatever you know two times 15 or five times six, and two is prime. I'm going to circle it so I remember. Okay, I don't have to do anything about it. And 15 is three times five. So now I get the final answer. Exactly the same. Two, two, three, five. OK, the same thing here. Five is prime. Leave it. Twelve. It's not three times four and four can be break down at, broken down as two times two. So be careful when you get down to four. Four can still be broken down further. Always make sure you check. And now you can see still the same answer. Two, two, three, five. OK, any questions about?